Stuart, thank you very much. I've outlined some areas that your local council has had issues with, and I think that's going to be reflected right across the board. But you, crucially, have got some solutions, have you not? Five-point plan. I have indeed, Patrick. Good evening. Good evening to your viewers. Uh, you're quite right to put it in the context that you have in terms of the level of pressure and the resource burden that that is placing on local authorities like the one of which I'm a member. But myself and the council leader, Councillor Andrew Johnson, have come forward with a five-point plan. We published this on Conservative Home a few weeks ago. And let me just quickly take you through that. The first is very much speaking to what you were just referring to in terms of getting local people involved. We need to have a local funding formula that government introduces, which isn't just the direct cost from taking a asylum seeker or a refugee, but accounts for the downstream costs, all the costs you were just listing, but also a local forum where we can have the four C's. That's got to be cooperation, collaboration, coordination, and cru crucially consent. Without consent, that is going to continue to cause dismay amongst the local population. And that's not what we want at all. Secondly, and I'm pleased to see that the Prime Minister's moved on this, I think we have to have a dedicated border control unit. The Home Office is a basket case of the department, in my opinion. Many years ago, the former Home Secretary, John Reid, described it as not being fit for purpose. I don't think it's improved at all in recent times. I think it's badly lacking match fitness. Yeah. And a bit like we did with the Vaccines Task Force, of which I was a member of, I think we need to actually take this out of the Home Office with proper leadership, external expertise and focus. Third area, international dialogue. Yes, good again to see the Prime Minister engaging with France, but we can't just have entente cordiale here where we give more money to France, we seemingly have people patrolling with the French, but then no legal enforcement. What we need to do is that if there are individuals crossing the channel, and it's a, it's a perilous, horrid reality for anybody to, to do that, and they have come directly from France, we need to have an agreement with France that we will then take those people directly back, not just yeah. to pay to patrol, but once exactly. they're with us and they've been checked for health reasons yeah. they're taken back. Quickly, border patrols. Clearly, we need to uh, invest more in border patrols and utilise the Royal Navy as appropriate. Um, and finally, as we heard on your programme yesterday, Tony Smith, the former Director General of the Border Force, and he clearly knows a thing or two about this, and this is very much in line with our fifth proposal. We need to have proper processing centres and accommodation units. Um, if needed, we need to look at repurposing public assets close to the border or looking at mobile units. We can't continue this policy of dumping in hotels. It, it's, yeah. not, it's not fair yeah. on the asylum seeker or the refugee. It's often coming from a very traumatised background. It's not fair on the local population. No, exactly that. And in your area right now, a couple of pretty major hotels are facing up to the reality that now the people who used to work in them have not got jobs. People in the local area have got a lot of these people who they don't know exactly who they are or where they're from to contend with. There's a massive burden, as I've outlined, to public services and local services. And it's people like you who are at the cold phase of this. And people like you, frankly, who may well have to suffer, wrongly, by the way, because you had no say in this, at the ballot box at the next election, whether it's a local election or indeed in your area. By the way, it's worth pointing out the local MP there is Theresa May. I, last time I checked, she'd reign relatively quiet. Meanwhile, though, Stuart, the Home Office Mandarin, who decided that all of this was a good idea, who presided over what can only be described as an absolute show over this, well, he's got a knighthood, hasn't he? Which is remarkable. I think it's absolutely staggering. It's uh, deeply confusing and profoundly perplexing how someone can be rewarded and honoured for overseeing the type of situation as described. I mean, that would be a bit like a football manager who's overseeing the relegation of their team winning manager of the year. I think the likes of Pep Guardiola and Arteta, and I'd like to put Eddie Howe, my manager of my team, Newcastle in the mix there, would be jumping up and down saying, what, what's going on? And this is much more serious than football. This is about our sovereignty. It's about defence of the realm. It's about control of the border and all of the things that you've just described. What is clear with the honour system, by the way, is that it needs to be reformed. Um, mm. It is a black box at the moment. It's intransparent. When someone gets an honour, what needs to happen is we need to publish the criteria by which they've been given an honour and mm. who actually nominated them, because 
There is privilege and access here. What, can, what on earth can this guy's criteria be? Yeah, what on earth can this guy's criteria be? Matthew Rycroft, Sir Matthew Rycroft, right? So he's going to end up with this criteria of, well, did you absolutely knacker local areas up and down the country? Did you manage to cost people their jobs? Did you manage to put an extra burden on social housing? Did you manage to put an extra burden on just social care in general? Did you do a lot to knock down house prices? All of this stuff. I mean, it's hardly a winner, is it? Look, Stuart, can I ask you, do you think if there was a referendum in the local area, in the Royal Borough of Windsor and Maidenhead, and it was made even obvious, even more obvious to people, uh, the exact cost. So they were, they were given a straight choice between, do you want to continue down this particular path now with the migrant hotels and have a 1.25% increase to your council tax slash a million pound funding cut to your local budget? Which way do you think they'd vote on that? I think people clearly would not be in favour of uh, the situation as it is. When I speak to people, look, people are kind-hearted and kind-spirited overwhelmingly. They want to play their role. We have a proud heritage as a country in giving genuine asylum seekers refuge, and we should continue to do that. That is the right thing for the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland to do. But it has to be done in a way that's secure that's controlled and that has proper, robust processes. We cannot have a situation where we can't control the border and then when we are seeking to process people, we dump them in local hotels. That is unacceptable. It's exactly. not sustainable. And quite rightly, local people want to see that reform. It's why the government has got to put this very top of its list in 2023. I know there's a lot going on. I appreciate that. Oh. But remember, oh. people voted for Brexit. And one of the arguments around Brexit was control borders, control the law of the land, exactly. and we need to see that pull exactly. through. And we're all skinned. And people are feeling the pinch as well, and this is only adding to it. And again, people have a right to vote on this, in my view. Thank you very much. I was Cabinet Member for Children's Services, Education and Health on Windsor and Maidenhead Council. That's Stuart Carroll. Look, people, get your views coming in. GBviews at gbnews.uk. I think enough is enough now, and it's time for local referendums on migrant hotels. People can put their money where their mouth is. If you want to have a big refugees welcome sign, absolutely. If you think that absolutely every single Tom, Dick and Harry who's coming across the channel is a genuine asylum seeker, be my guest. You, in your local area, can pay for the brunt of these council hotels. Because actually what we're seeing now, frankly, is around a million quid. That's just one area. And that'll be happening in your area. And when it's all laid bare and your kid can't get a place in school and all of that stuff, do you really still stand in favour of it? I'm not sure. GBviews at gbnews.uk. And it's how clandestine it is as well. Why is it the Home Office isn't telling the local areas before they plonk a migrant hotel there? It's because they don't want the backlash. It's because they know the vast majority of the British public do not want it.